If I'd known what music was, I think I would have worn my dressing gown. <laughs> um, okay, last week before lunch cupcakes, uh, I'll try and I'll try I'll try and keep on schedule. Uh, I think I'm as probably as hungry as all of you. Uh, tough question to answer. What's the head for for the National Health Service? Um, six minutes per second is even tougher. But here goes. Okay, a um, couple of people here enough from the jurisdictions so just very briefly uh, with a single national service uh, for the country. It's a small country, so it's probably easier to do that. Um, we, we, Dublin, EMS is, is provided by Dublin Fire Brigade, which we fund, um, and we provide a, a ambulance service in the rest of the country and in, in Dublin as well. Uh, we have 1,500 clinical staff, BLS, ALS breakdown about three quarters to a quarter, which we're working, working to increase. Uh, 799 calls every 24 hours, uh, 4.6 million people, 12 and a half million miles. So, lots of moving parts. Lots of challenges. Um, healthcare is challenging globally. In the, this country, it is challenging, and in EMS, it is challenging. There are a couple of them that I think are going to have a, a, an influence, have had an influence, and will continue to have an influence on, on how we develop. Um, big one, don't have to tell anybody here in the room what this country has gone through in the last number of years, uh, what the implications for health has been, you know, over a billion euros taken from the health budget, uh, that has filtered on to us, uh, headcount down in the HSC by thousands, um, that has filtered on to us. Uh, interestingly, not as a, as a service, even though we make up just 1% of the HSC, um, we're, we're quite a small part, but we have, haven't have suffered as much as other branches, although we have had um, so, some, some challenges, but relatively speaking, compared to other parts of the health service, we haven't taken as big a hit. Um, but it is an issue, particularly in, in a service that is changing, uh, and we're trying to develop a service, trying to react to, for example, a 10% uh, increase in demand last year uh, in a very challenging financial environment. Uh, we have regulatory challenges. Um, we're, I think, the only part of the health service that's actually looking enough to have two regulators, not one. Um, uh, one of them's paying for dinner tonight, so I won't say too much about them. Thanks, Brian. Um, uh, okay, I'll drop this slide. We, have, we actually do have a very good relationship with FEC. Um, we have our moments, obviously, but uh, I think on, on balance it's, it's, it's good. Uh, and equally, we have a very good relationship with HICWA. Again, we have our moments with them. We're going through a review by HICWA at the moment. Uh, it was a planned review that HICWA published national standards for safe and better healthcare 18 months ago, uh, flagged at acute hospitals and national health service would be first off for that. So we're going through that at the moment. Uh, I think it will be positive. Um, it's, uh, the analogy I use is a bit like going to the dentist. It's uncomfortable, but it'll be worth it in the end. Uh, I think some good things will come out of it. But again, a challenge for us at the moment. Uh, another challenge, a particularly acute one in recent months, public expectation, media attention, political attention. Um, understandable, um, some, some of it, much of it actually I would say probably not necessarily fair, uh, but nonetheless understandable. Public expectation is high, uh, and again that's a challenge for us to try and meet that in the context of trying to, to refine and change and develop the service. Um, but anyway, that's, that's, that's what we're here for. Where are we going? A um, couple of different things I think that will have uh, a big impact on us in the medium and the long term. And these are sort of the broad headings that I would use to, to consider those. Uh, I'll start with the last one first. Um, the HSE is on its uh, final approach. It's, it's, you know, in 18 months, two years, the HSE will not exist. Uh, the hospital sector are probably uh, well ahead of that now with the formation of the hospital groups and trusts, uh, and it's still unclear to us where we're going to end up uh, in that shake-up. Um, universal health insurance, I think, would probably complicate that even more because the, the model, as I understand it, is that the money will follow the patient. Um, I'm not sure that that works well in the EMS environment where, where you're funded based on you know individual patient interaction. It comes with a, a fixed cost. Uh, so you know we may end up as a trust or some sort of autonomous body we may end up directly under the Department of Health. I know, I know in, in some of the recent discussions about universal health insurance, uh, it, it was suggested that the essential services uh, would remain and be funded directly by the state and would not come under the, the fee per item model, so, which is interesting. Uh, so that I think will have a huge influence on where we go into the future. It is still unclear as to where we will end. 
we're in the middle of a, an enormous uh, logistical exercise of rationalizing uh, our command control infrastructure. Legacy issue from former health board aligned regional ambulance services, multiple control centers in a very small country uh, with huge issues uh, around mapping and technology and staffing. Uh, so we've gone from 13 centers a couple years ago, six today, uh, next year one center on two sites. Huge investment, we bought a building in Tala of Anama. Uh, we have multi-million euro investment into, tech, into CAD technology, comms, uh, mapping, deployment models. Um, it, it, will trans, it, it, it is transforming how we operate and it will continue to transform how we operate, but it's, uh, it's, it's a long and tortuous process, uh, but I think it will be worth it when we get there. Uh, operations, lots going on there, dynamic deployment, how we actually deploy is changing, it will continue to change. Um, you know, the idea of, of having fixed ambulances in, in ambulance stations, uh, that, you know, we don't get 9 on calls in ambulance stations, having m multiple vehicles in one location, uh, as soon as I see two ambulances parked up, straight away I see one of them's in the wrong place. Uh, we're, going to tier, we're in the process of tiering our service, intermediate care, uh, hugely efficient use of resources, um, massive ability to move patients uh, around low acuity patients. Each ICD is worth about 1.8 emergency ambulances in terms of the efficiency of returns back to us. The Air Medical Services is continuing to develop, um, has a huge impact on small numbers of patients. Uh, we do, you know, quarter of a million calls a year. The numbers of patients moved by air are in their hundreds, but for those small numbers of patients, huge impacts. Clinical stuff coming down the line, lots of new medications. Uh, we've medazolam at paramedic level for seizures, trial that in the East Coast, worked well, looking to roll that out. Uh, Ticagrelor, national uh, single platelet inhib inhibition for STEMI patients. Tranexamic acid, we heard a lot about that yesterday. That's coming, CPG is approved, and uh, we'll be rolling that out very shortly. Uh, lots of investment in technology. Um, again, a legacy issue. Uh, multiple defib manufacturers. Uh, huge problems caused by that. We're hoping to move to a single platform, single manufacturer, very shortly. Mechanical CPR, uh, subject close to my heart, something that we'll be rolling out nationally, uh, frontline, in the next 12 months. Um, and hopefully next year, looking at non-invasive ventilation. Again, CPG is at uh, the final stages of, of being approved, and that will make a huge difference as well. Uh, one really big clinical quality initiative that you'll be hearing a lot about from me and from Connor and others in the autumn is what we're calling the One Life Project. Uh, we're committed, we've committed this year to publishing on a monthly basis our cardiac arrest outcome figures. Uh, the first time we'll be publicly reporting on a clinical outcome measure. Um, and alongside of that, we've got, we've got a project, uh, a performance improvement plan beside that to try and help drive performance up, uh, improve our outcomes in cardiac arrest, with the result that more people will actually be walking around in the future that would otherwise have died. Um, so, that's going on. Um, we are, I think, on a journey. Uh, we're halfway there. We still have a way to go. Um, there's been a few bumps in the road. I expect there will be a few ahead, but uh, going in the right direction. Thank you very much.